Thank you for joining me on today's episode of Entrepreneur Encounters. In today's interview, I talk with Joe Skatarze, and I want to talk about his entrepreneurial journey he had with a successful computer and technology service company called River Run Computers. For those of you who aren't focused in the tech space, I think you're going to be surprised to hear about all the application he's able to make to non-technical businesses. Let's listen to what he has to say. So um, I've been in the small business technology space through the last couple of decades plus. Really, our mission and our model has always been to help companies leverage technology to increase their profitability better take care of their own customers and that kind of thing. Going to the, to the way back when I was a kid growing up, my dad was a small businessman for most of my childhood. I was always sort of worked in small businesses as an accountant by training and got into a partnership when I was a kid. And so I just really liked the whole idea of that. You control your own destiny, be able to um, provide a service in the way that you want to be able to do it. And so when I got out of school, I spent a handful of years working for a consulting company, switched careers into technology, and ultimately, you know, the main thing that made me want to be an entrepreneur is the idea that, hey, if we get involved in this at the leader level, at the owner level, we can do this better, you know? No, no slam at anybody that came before, but we had some ideas and we had some energy and, and we wanted to take them out for a spin. So that's what we did. I love that. Hey, Joe's dad set the example as a small business owner, and he paved the way for the example that Joe was going to follow. So many of the small business owners and entrepreneurs we talked to have that similar path. We are built into so early and experience so many role models that those pieces kind of get set in, and we want to watch our parents blaze the trail. So be aware, for those of you who have kids, for those of you who have folks who are watching, you're setting a trend and a path. What people choose to do and the way they're oriented and wired can be triggered and unleashed in all sorts of different ways. So if you're an entrepreneur, you may be absolutely impressing and amazing a kid coming behind you and make sure to lean into that. So Joe goes on to say one of the greatest lines I love hearing all entrepreneurs say, how can we do this better? When we talk about being unique, it doesn't mean that like no one else has ever entered this service before. No one else has served this type of food. No one else has delivered this category of business before. There's nothing new under the sun. However, how many of us start a business because we looked at something and said, that's not right. I think it can be done better, right? We knew how it needed to be addressed. That's what we do all the time at Milwaukee Small Business Coach. We work with people who are amazing at their skill, craft, or trade, and they started to see there's an opportunity here to do this better, to do this a different way, to do this in a way that customers are going to love, that they're going to be delighted for. And they didn't see anyone else quite doing it their way. That becomes a unique value service proposition. We do it. By, by mixing insight and empathy with a large dose of humor because entrepreneurship is hard, but it can also be fun and we want to bring that forward for you. So Joe goes on to share a little bit more about how he came up with the business model they decided to follow. Let's listen to what he says here. There was actually an existing company that we took ownership of and it was doing good work. And we thought, like I said, we thought we could do it better. And so the market was changing. I mean, this goes back to the late nineties. And for those of you those of us old enough to remember that it was a very different technology world. You know, email hadn't been invented by the same token. Things that haven't changed, especially in the small business space is people trying to take care of their own customers and leveraging technology to do it. So we had a group of people, we leaned into it and we said, Hey, look, let's, let's focus on the service as opposed to the technology. Let's focus on helping our clients to run their businesses better using technology to focus on their customers as opposed to, you know, technology for its sake. And so it, it's an entirely different world many times over since the late nineties with all the things that have come out, we absolutely had to pivot. And it has continued to change. I mean, the, the, there's a lot, of, a lot of bad folks out there who are looking for an opportunity. It, it's really gotten, it's frankly gotten scary out there. And, and so, you know, been many, many pivots all the way along in terms of how do we run this? What kind of team are we building? What, what are the services that our clients want? So that was sort of the, the vision of the problem we were trying to solve is how do we just make this work, keep it quiet in the background? So over the course of my, you know, 25 years now in this business, a lot of those things have evolved, but the goal is the same. 
you know, talking with a guy earlier this morning, you know, he's not getting good support and he's got concerns about his security. Okay. Well, we, we've got a process to help you with that. You know, do you want to talk about it? He says, yeah, I do. Because it's right now technology is hindering my ability to run my business, take care of my things. And so even 25 years later, with all this different stuff going on, the goal is the same, have the technology work, make it safe, stable, and secure so that ultimately I can stay focused on my customer. So much that sometimes it's either the butt of jokes or it's lost some of its value. But ultimately, it just means that we cannot always keep going in the same direction when we started. There may be a new or a better opportunity. We need to be ready to turn and be able to pursue that opportunity. That's really what Joe is talking about here. Talk about an industry that's always subject to change, technology. So as they looked at it and tried to figure out what is it that we need to do, he's talking about starting back in technology, you know, pre-email. We're talking like, you know, DOS era. You know, blue screen of death. It actually may have been before the blue screen of death. Like, it's just absolutely crazy. But things keep changing. And if you're going to be relevant in the technology world, particularly servicing technology, you've got to figure out how to adapt and change and grow. And so when looking beneath the hood, what's one key feature that he did? Something that we can all translate to our business? He did some of that customer discovery. What do I mean by that? He tried to figure out what is it that my customers want? What is their pain point? when it comes to technology. And for a lot of businesses, and a lot of us have been there, we start out, we're doing all the things. We're managing all our technology. We're buying all the subscriptions. When something doesn't work, we got to spend time troubleshooting it. You know, the printer isn't working. Like, why isn't it working? Does it need a new toner? Do we have to set it up better? Is it configured wrong? Did it get disconnected from the internet? Who knows? We oftentimes do all that. Well, he was running into customers that said, enough. I want to outsource that. I want to figure that out. So they figured out, how do we move into that space to manage IT in a whole variety of ways that it can be managed where you can do be doing software, you can do hardware. There's a lot of places there. How can he build a system and some processes to be able to support that? So same question I want to turn around to everyone else. What is the opportunity that your customers are experiencing this within your skill set, within your area of expertise, that perhaps you can step in and make a change for your business? in order to find out that you have an opportunity that you can make some more money in. So Joe goes on to talk about the role that his business partner played in their business. Let's listen. You know, they say it's lonely at the top. I was very fortunate to, to have a partner. You know, a, a lot of people are more lone wolf oriented, if you will. I'm, I'm not wired that way. I mean, I think best talking. And so for me to have a partner was incredibly valuable. But also for us to have a network, you know, I was in a tech group. And so I, I would take our issue there, uh, a cross-section perspectives on this sales question or that HR thing or this financing issue that we're running into and, and be able to sort of bring that back and, again, update that plan according. In our case, our financing needs were, they were fairly simple. And, and we were not looking to grow anything really but organic. We were fortunate to have good good partners in terms of financial partners to be able to facilitate what we were trying to accomplish when we were trying to accomplish it. You know, to the degree you can build a partnership and a relationship with folks who are going to help you build up and grow and make your business successful. You can complement each other. Sometimes you're bringing your strengths together to amplify what you're doing. That's super amazing. Here at Milwaukee Small Business Coach, my wife, Kate, has joined with me and we are just figuring out how to split the networking, how to compare notes, how to multiply we were working in one circle before. It's not just another circle, it's two circles bigger. How do you make it larger in order to be ultimately successful? So Kate's my partner and I'm super grateful to have her on board. We're both a verbal processor to some degree and it's invaluable to have that type of support. Whether you have a direct business partner or not, I do wanna encourage you to go out and get that support. Find other entrepreneurs, find informal mentors, just find other people who understand the small business entrepreneurship solo owner space and start to build into that. A lot of times it can't be your employees and sometimes it can't be friends and family because they don't quite understand. So seek some people out that are really going to get it for you. All right. Joe goes on to talk about responding to obstacles. Really, really important topic because we're all going to come into them. Let's hear what he has to say. It was it Mike Tyson said, you know, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face, right? I mean, business is no different. I mean, there's obstacles every day. The plumbing backs up. The 
the computers go down. The internet connection gets hit by a backhoe when our neighbors are putting in their new driveway. 2008 comes along and, you know, the whole financial world just greater. So obstacles are big and small and they're never ending. And how do you deal with them is that's the difference between success and failure. Success isn't never getting knocked down. It's getting up one more time than you got knocked down. And, and again, that's where having a plan, you know, having partners in terms of financial people, especially when the crap hits the fan, having a network of people, partners, support people, professionals, whatever. I mean, all of those things together allow you to lean into it and say, okay, you know, the sky's not falling, but this is a big deal. How do we respond to it? And so being able to talk to your partner, talk to your coach, talk to your peer group, talk to your experts, your banker, attorney, accountant, et cetera. So when we start to talk about obstacles, it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. You're going to have obstacles that are going to come up. They're going to look like roadblocks, closed doors, un unexpected disasters, things that you just thought were going to be perfect and they didn't work out well. A new change in the marketplace that you weren't anticipating. Who knows what they are? There are going to be lots of them. The key is we need to be ready and we need to be nimble in order to change. Joe took it to the next step. We just talked about having trusted partners, but then he's talking about having trusted advisors. So we continue to build out that network. A lot of times we have difficulty seeing what the next steps are. That's a place at Milwaukee Small Business Coach where we step in frequently, whether it's with our one-on-one -on -one clients or clients that are in a group setting in our tag, take action groups. We make sure that people understand not only what's the obstacle, but hey, what's the path around? One of the gifts that we have that we bring is that the path to get forward may not be straight. It may not be a path other people have taken before. But remember, we got into business because we saw an opportunity worth pursuing. And one obstacle, one closed door, one roadblock cannot be enough to stop us. So there may be ways to partner. There may be new ways to do my offering. There are lots of ways we can bring our creativity to bear. But let's not let obstacles keep us down because that is one of the places where you can separate yourself from anyone else who considers themselves competition or alternative. Some people stop when the going gets tough. I want us to double down and keep working harder to find the right path forward and work smarter and to build that community and tap into their knowledge because we're going to learn a new and a different method. And some of the best business models that we see now iterated because they found obstacles and they had the perseverance to overcome. So I went on to ask Joe, how is it that he's going to stay sharp and focus in when there's so much content out there that we can learn from? And that's a constant challenge that we have in this environment. Let's hear what Joe has to say. Find a peer group where, where you can develop a relationship with people and they get to know you, they get to know your business, they get to know your life. You get to be friends with them so that when that issue comes, when life throws you a curveball because something changes, you've got a go-to group to say, hey, what do you guys know about this? Hey, have any of you guys experienced this so that you're not, fighting that battle alone, you know? To, so to me, I mean, really the, the diversification of sources is, is by far the most important thing and the most valuable thing. So there's a ton of content out there. It absolutely can be overwhelming, but pick your spots. Pick your spots. I love that. There is a lot of places where we can learn information. One of the challenges we have, there's a couple that really come up. The first one's going to be the shiny object syndrome. It's interesting. It's fun. I'm going to pursue it. I'm going to chase it, particularly when it's a distraction from the work I need to be doing in order to advance my business and get it to the next step. Another one's going to be following the trends and the fads. Well, I heard someone was on this new social platform. I think I'm going to go invest in it and go figure it out and try it out. What I want you to do instead is to find your people, find your groups, find your sources of information, ask them, get some feedback. You're going to have to sort it because people are going to have different ideas and perspectives. But I think you're going to start to see from those people who are trusted, those people understand your business model a little bit better. Find coaches, find other support that can help you out, that people are going to start to give you advice that's helpful. Find a few areas and go deeper rather than be an inch deep and try and cover a whole breadth. And that covers all sorts of items. But I want you to focus on going deep in the areas where you go. Wherever you choose to be, go deep, dive in. If you want to learn some information, go ahead and acquire some knowledge, but make sure it's useful and that you can apply it. So one of the big issues that businesses have many times when we're starting out, because we're talking about building this big network, is 
how do we end up raising the capital and getting enough funds to start hiring out and outsourcing anyway, to get out of the solopreneur trap, which doesn't mean it's bad to be a solopreneur. What it means is that we keep doing all the things all the time by ourselves and can't figure out how to start really amplifying and leveraging our skill set by sourcing that out. Let's hear what Joe's answer to that question is. It's easy to say, go higher, but, but you can't, right? There's a couple of keys to it. One is don't go in looking for help necessarily, but look for how you can help. How can you bring value? Everybody knows people, everybody has resources. I was talking to a guy just this morning and he said, you know, talking to somebody, maybe they're looking to get their house painted. I know a house painter and, he, and, and he's good and he's honest. He's got a nice little business. So go in seeking first to help and then only secondarily to get help. That's the easiest way to build a network is to be helpful to people and uh, also to be enough to ask for help. Hey, Brent, you know, I got this business. I got this issue. Do you know anybody? Because people want to help, right? But you've got to be humble enough to ask for the help, right? In, in order to be able to sort of make that connection. Because if I ask you for help, what do you can say? Hey, happy to help, right? I like the angle that we're talking about here. It's not always about acquiring capital. It's not always about writing a bigger check. Step one, go in, build a network, offer to help. Find ways that we can give back and support and build people up. There may be a trade and barter opportunity. There may be avenues where people are able to give you a few nudges along the way in order to support you and give you just enough that you need to be able to make it to the next level. But if we have an attitude that we're going to show up and we're going to ask to help rather than always asking to get, and where can I find and how can I get it discounted? And do they have a free version of that? Go in instead of being humble and sharing what we have, not in a way that we're letting people take advantage of us and all everyone showing up out of the woodwork and saying, hey, you need to do all that stuff for free. That's not what I'm talking about. But I'm talking about you can sprinkle a lot of your wisdom, a lot of your skill, a lot of your amazing skill, trade, and craft in and start to build rapport, build community, and be able to get back out from that investment that you make. Like you, I can't do this on my own. My awesome wife, Kate, does all the editing on this to make these videos and audio possible for you. Chris Crane does our music. If you like what we're talking about here, I do encourage you, please like it, subscribe, and share with others who need to know. So again, thank you for joining me on this episode of Entrepreneur Encounters. I'm Brent Halfwasson, Milwaukee Small Business Coach, and I want to invite Chris to take us out. Ready to take